Alright, welcome back to episode... Fuck, three? <laughs> episode three of Danger and Violence Extreme The Rebirth. Great start. Great fucking start that was. Wow, I'm just tripping over my goddamn words like I'm wearing high heels in the middle of the fucking sand dunes. So, there's that. But, uh, it's been a week in-game, so... Obviously, news has happened. Um, I wrote down three things. The first thing I wrote was EILL is turning every single fucking worker they have. They've turned, um, L how am I gonna, I can, no, I can go here. Alright, they turned this guy. Fuck. And sh I, don't, I don't know how to, I don't know his name. El Abrador, right? L, uh, you know, fuck it, alright, I'll just put his name on screen, they turned him, they turned, fuck, I keep hitting that, why did I exit, okay, they turned him, they turned multi millenario and then they turned another person that I couldn't be arsed to remember, alright, what, what a waste of time that was, all I know is that all of their main eventers are apparent, Axis, they turned Axis, all I know is that apparently all of their main eventers are the wrong disposition, so, that's fucking weird. I, I don't even think Lucha Underground turned people like that quickly. Um, Oli is now a developmental territory. I guess that just happens in almost every save now. It happens a lot, apparently. O Oli, I guess, just goes to development for EILL now. Uh, that's something I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to feel about. And then, last thing I wrote is, much like uh, 2016, EWA is going fucking insane. In the terms of they just set war to every other European company. I guess Vince is booking fucking EWA too. Alright, um, so that's the news. Let's get that shit out of here. Um, a lot other thing that I have is... So, a lot of you guys are still suggesting people I should sign. That's good. I still want that. Um, I've seen all the suggestions and I've had, I have this shortlist... Don't know where the hell shortlist is. Um, while I'm looking for shortlist. So there's three things. that Where the fuck is shortlist? Am I stupid? Oh my god. So three things that you need to do. Um, is make sure that they have at least 50 brawling and 50 hardcore. And that they're not a negative influence. Those are the only three requirements, right? However, I'm not hiring anybody at the moment. Because... Um, we all, we have 30, we already have 10 more than we need, and I don't want to start just signing people for the sake of signing people, right? But eventually, I want this, to, as of right now, until we, hopefully we'll move up from small, until we move up from small, then I want it to be like a, I always want to be 10 more than the recommended amount, okay? And once I hit that number, it's a one in, one out kind of scenario, so once somebody leaves, one of these guys... Is going to be taking the place. Chip Martin. I don't know why you're on here. I did not mean to shortlist you. Chip Martin. Despite being the son of Johnny Martin. Has no hardcore and no brawling. He will be absolutely shit on by this fan base. So. There's everybody I have. Um, I think uh, someone said... Ash Campbell, I think he's a, either a dick or he's not good at one of the two. So, oh, I actually typed it. I didn't look at the keyboard. Look at me. Uh, insecure, I think that's negative, right? Thanks for fucking making this so easy. Yeah, mildly negative. So, yeah, I don't want negative Nancys on this company. So... That's it for the non-show. Let's actually get into episode 2 of the new Danger Zone TV. We start off with a kickoff match. This is just to get... So this show, there were four more... Oh, shit. I'll, there were four more people in the company that have yet to, like, even appear on TV. And I'm using them all on this show so that I can just get all their gimmicks done and get them off of my fucking homepage. So... In the pre-show, I didn't want to cut a promo for Tennessee, but we're just going to pretend like there was. So, before the match, Tennessee, he just grabs the mic and he's like, Dave, I should have stayed dead. 
Hardcore is just fucking ridiculous. Who in the face of the earth thinks hardcore is a good idea? Anyone here? And the crowd goes, just fucking starts yelling at him. Like, yeah, of fucking course. Why else would we be here? Tennessee's like, ah. Fucking Neanderthals. Hardcore is... Look, you're gonna know me soon. Hardcore's gonna fucking die once I get my... Frankie Perez music hits, cuts him off. Frankie Perez and him have a pretty good match, actually, all things considered, for two guys that were either recognizable and... Un- I can't I can't remember the names of these fucking... Jobber and not... Almost Jobber. There you go. Th- those are the fucking rankings. Recap gimmick. I don't care. All right, so then we actually open the show with Phil Bear and Chris Caulfield. Phil is in his office with Chris, and he's like, Chris, what the fuck am I going to do, man? I try to give the young guys a shot. I know Akima Brave isn't that young, but compared to the fucking grandpa's Elsa on this roster, he's pretty fucking young. I try to give him a world title match, and then what do you fucking know? Two masked goons show up out of nowhere and take his fucking kneecaps like he was a fu- part of the fucking mafia. And Chris is like, Phil. Phil, I know... I know who did this, alright? Pablo is fucking behind this, alright? I know who the fuck is behind this. I know Pablo's stupid priest ass is behind all of this bullshit. And Phil's like, how do you know? How do you know? Because last time, Pablo got accused of some shit. He was fired or whatever the fuck. I don't know. I I don't care about fucking Mexican wrestling, alright? I wasn't paying attention. Chris is like, I'm gonna, I'll take care of it. I know Pablo was behind this. Next segment, clearly Chris thinks Pablo's behind this. We then have another Knuckles match. This time he faced Toma. Toma, once again, guy I haven't used yet. Need to get him on the roster. Next segment, we have Knuckles and Shady K. Does not appear in the show, like, but he's on screen, as in, he's on, like, whatever fucking screen we use for entrances, like, our version of a, maybe a not-so-jumbotron, and he's just, in Knuckles, he's like, listen, guys, I know, I know, and many of you are fucking mad at me for what I did, oh, at the Hardcore Reborn and last episode of Danger Zone TV, oh, let me tell you something, guys, Shady K ain't shit, all right? There's a reason why we weren't hired in a company for so fucking long. And let me tell you, it wasn't me, boys. Alright? Here's a picture I brought for you of Shady K. Okay? Look at that. That's the face of a man who sucks. Alright? Shady K ain't shit. And then, I kind of swerved you guys because Shady K does actually appear. He jumps from the barricade and he fucking knuckles in him. They go back and forth with fists. Eventually, Knuckles, you know, he Shady K hits Knuckles on the ground, but because this is Dave and most of the workers aren't pussies, Knuckles tries to get back up, but Shady K, he pulls a fucking piece of barbed wire out of his pocket, and he just starts choking Knuckles out with the barbed wire. Obviously, it is gimmick, but Knuckles still blades a little. So, yep, there you go. Shady K is not taking any shit from Knuckles. Next segment, we have... Xavier Reckless and Doug Peak. Doug Peak clearly here to make sure that Madman Boone is incorrect of his stance of him. Doug Peak is not shit, okay? Doug Peak was not the reason that they lost the unknown number one contenders match. Doug Peak beats Xavier Reckless. So, there's that. But after the match, Madman Boone comes out and he's like, Doug, Doug, I know, I know you think you're hot shit because you beat Xavier Reckless who nobody really knows, all right? So, there's that. But here's the thing, Doug. You aren't Dave enough. This is Dave, okay? And Doug kind of cuts him off. He's like, I'm not Dave enough. I'm not fucking Dave enough. Did you not see what I did to him in that match? Uh, Just quick clarification, since this is Dave, every match is a hardcore match or some sort, like hardcore weapons, so crazy shit's gonna happen. I don't want to just go through every fucking match and just be like, ah, and then they pile driver it off the Titan Tron. Like, just assume you're gonna see some crazy shit in these matches. So, Doug's like, did you not see what I did to him in this fucking match, Madman? I'm not Dave enough. 
uh, no doubt, Doug, you did some pretty crazy shit, but, um, not crazy enough, really, see, that kind of stuff, uh, belongs back in Warrior Engine, bro, um, so, why don't you take you and your stupid little Japan Deathmatch style and go back to Warrior, oh, wait, you can't go back to Warrior Engine because you killed that stupid fucking company, and then Doug is just, oh, he's furious, he's, you want me to go back to a company that died? Well, I was on top of a company that died when you couldn't even get a decent mid card match down at PSW, and the shit is just heated. They are furious. We go to commercial. God only knows how they fucked each other in... Pause. God only knows how they fucked each other up in the middle of that commercial. We then have the next match in the Trials of the McWade Brothers, where they defeat Brown Pride. So... I don't think anyone really thought they were going to lose. The only people that thought they were going to lose are these two boys. Yeah, these two boys. Flex Garcia and Pex and Menace. They're backstage. They're in the ghetto-ass gym that we have here in Dave. And they're just working out. They're not even watching the match. They're just working out. And Flex, he glances over at the TV. He sees the McQuaid celebrating. He drops his uh fucking... Uh, Fuck, what's the name of it? I had it. <laughs> not, not dumb. Whatever. He drops his comically fucking heavy, you know, barbell or whatever the fuck. And he's just like, holy shit. Pex, Pex. He's just like, as he's doing curls with the fucking crooked bar, he's just like, what, dude? God. Ah, ah. He's just fucking working out. And then Flex is like, dude, they fucking beat Brown Pride. And Pex is like, how? They're like 80. Fuck, I know, I know, Pex. Look, uh, this might actually become a problem, alright? I put Dirty White Boys last because I was so confident they would have lost by now, alright? I don't actually think they're going to lose to the Dirty Fucking White Boys, alright? Pex says, you might be onto something, you might be onto something. Alright, 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 alright. What are we going to do, Flex? I think... Maybe a little, um, a little attack from a, a handsome stranger might be in order. Pex is not picking up on this. He's like, what? Handsome strange. Who? F fucking God, Pex. All right, next. Holy shit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. See, this is what happens when, um, people do not like, so if we get guys like Johnny Martin's son, they're gonna fucking be, they're gonna just hate them. Like, they're just not particularly thrilled with these two, but they will eat Johnny Martin's kid alive, so, um, but I need these two, cause they're both over. I can easily transfer Acid's Pop right now. But Java, I, oh my god, it's not gonna be that bad, like, the, to both of them, and then Acid was off his game, and they don't click, and it's still got a 44, I think we'll be okay for now, I don't know, I think it might get worse, but, yeah, in our main event, Java and Acid go at it, the, the, the bout of, um, the beloved baby faces, Go at it, where Java wins because he's in a storyline. And then after the match, Tribal Warrior comes out. And then, like, no words are exchanged. Tribal Warrior just comes out and he just beats the ever-living shit out of Java for six minutes straight. It's just brutal. The Day fans are, are liking it for the first four minutes. And then it becomes, like, uh, becomes kind of awkward. Because they're just doing, like, spots. They're just over and over again. Just different fucking spots. And Tribal Warrior's just constantly beating him up. And then at, like, the six-minute mark, Tribal Warrior tries to climb the top rope and tries to be like, Yeah, I'm the good guy! And then the fans are like, Ah, uh, uh, I mean, this is, I know this is Dave and all, but, uh, uh that's kind of awkward to watch. You beat up your fucking, your fucking blood brother like that, my guy. <laughs> just fucking. So, yeah. And then, after the match, or, I don't know, I guess that was fucking, after the brutal segment that Java had to go through, 
we have Chris Caulfield, he comes out. He calls out Pablo. Pablo's like, hey, Chris, what the fuck do you want? Chris is like, hey, Pablo, first off, I don't know what the hell kind of gimmick you're rocking. Like, I don't know why you're a fucking priest and you're swearing like you're Satan's priest. And Pablo's like, ah, shut the fuck up. I live my life how I fucking want to. And Chris, all right, all right, all right, I'll, I'll accept that. But one thing I will not accept is you taking out Akima Brave's ankles just because you couldn't get it done at Hardcore Reborn. So you had to take out Akima Brave to get your little title shot. And then Pablo says, oh, you think this is me? You think this is me? No, 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 no. You see, I am Pablo Rod fucking Riguez. I don't need to stoop to that those kind of fucking lows that you got. All right, I get that you, Chris Caulfield, might have pulled some of that soft shit down in USPW, but over in South of the Border or EILL, I didn't get to work for that company. I worked for South of the Border. Down in South of the Border, you didn't get to do pussy shit like that. I had a fucking stable, and how far did that get me? Not so fucking far. You think that I would do this? Please, Chris. I'm not a sellout like you. Going down to the United States Pro Wrestling, toning down you and your stupid fucking gimmick and your stupid fucking hardcore attitude, toning it all down for a paycheck. Now that sounds like the person that would hire two men, put them in masks, and take out their opponents. So, Chris, who's the real pussy in this feud? And then Chris, furious at what he's saying, headbutts Pablo, hits his driver, Pablo rolls out of the ring, and right when Pablo rolls out of the ring, guess who shows up? The fucking masked men. The masked men show up, and they beat the shit out of Chris Caulfield. Chris Caulfield is trying to get help from Pablo, but Pablo is just knocked out cold. So, then then we end the show. These are the renders for the masked men. I'm pretty sure you've noticed, by the way. I don't know why masked man, too, it looks like he's gonna cry, but he, he does. So, that's gonna be our show. We on the show, 52, pretty good, pretty good, let's go, PA excellence, I don't get the joke, do not get the joke, I don't even know if that's a joke, I just don't, I don't get it, alright, feedback has been excellent, let's go, alright, nothing's happening in the news, nothing ever fun happens in the news, alright, delete all, there we go. I didn't see how many people. Fuck, how many people did we get? We managed to sucker in 89,000 people to watch this fucking show. So, nice. Alright. I think that's gonna be it. All of my messages should be... Fuck, Frantic Ali. Frantic Ali, I did not book. I was gonna do that on the pre-show. Ah, oh, fuck. I was gonna be a three-way, wasn't it? Shit. Well, I'm gonna need to... Pre-book some stuff right now. Because... I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. So, I'm going to do that so I avoid penalties at Counterculture 2020. I think that's it. So, yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode of fucking Dave. Yeah. Mm-hmm.